Hello, Faith Christian Center, and welcome to this beautiful, glorious day. This Tuesday, this is the day that the Lord has made. It's a little easier on a day like today because the sun is out, this terrible storm has come through, and maybe some of you lost your power and uh, had a little damage. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is still the day the Lord has made. Jesus is still Lord today, regardless of what yesterday's like or today is like or tomorrow's like. He's Lord of today, yesterday, today, and forever. We're talking this week about prayer and how we need to develop our own personal prayer life, our family's prayer life, and as a church. And, and this is things we've known, but in this time, this urgent time of crisis, we really need to bear down on this. And I think we're going to find God prove to us and show us how effective our prayers are. I think, as I said yesterday, the reason most of us aren't real prayer warriors is we really don't have confidence that our prayers are going to get answered. Because we certainly know we have needs. We have family members that have needs. Maybe you have family members that aren't saved or they're maybe saved, but they're not walking with the Lord. And you certainly have neighbors and there are needs all around us. And there certainly are needs today. So God hears and answers prayer. And that's what we've been talking about. Yesterday, I challenged you to examine yourself and find out where you were in your own prayer life. Do you really believe God's going to answer your prayers? Well, today, what I want to share with you very quickly is is that our prayers, one of the ways we need to have confidence in our prayers is to know that we're praying according to God's word. Because one of the questions is always, well, I don't know if this is God's will or not. And for years, the church ruined the faith in prayers by adding at the end, if it be your will. Well, if you don't know whether it's God's will or not, don't ask for it. And the responsibility is not on him. It's on us to know whether something's God's will or not. And God's given us his word to tell us what is his will and what is not his will, or within the, the boundaries of his will. And it works. I'll give you a simple example this morning. Last night, as I was going to bed, I looked outside and discovered that a section of the fence in our backyard that separates our yard from our neighbor's yard had been blown down by the wind. And it was getting old anyway, so it wasn't terribly surprised that that had happened. But the concern is our neighbor's has, has two full-grown, very active Labrador retrievers who love to wander around, and this fence is what keeps them out of our yard. So I went to bed last night thinking, what am I going to do? You know, this is another thing I got to deal with, and I don't have time to deal with this, and how am I going to deal with this? And I don't know that, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do. And I, so I just went to bed. I just kind of parked it in my mind. When I get up this morning, I was again reading some things that encouraged my faith. And I remembered a scripture that God really had me bear down on a year or so ago. And it's in Philippians 4. And it's a little scripture, it's easy to recite, but are we living it? Where Paul says, and Jesus says to us through Paul, be anxious for nothing. All right, I'm not supposed to be anxious, but what am I supposed to do? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, that means asking, make your request known to God with thanksgiving. And Lord was teaching me over the last few years, don't allow yourself to be anxious. Whatever you'd be anxious about, come to me. I'm able to handle it. So when I got up this morning and the first thought was, what am I going to do about that fence? I remembered this scripture and I said, Lord, I will not be anxious, but I'm coming to you and saying, somehow you have an answer for this. I don't know what it is. I can't lift that thing up. I don't know how I'm going to get it up there, what I'm going to do, but I'm not even going to worry about it or think about it. I've come to you and you're going to solve it. Well, to make a long story short, I went out there, took a look at it. It was a big, heavy section of fence. I went around to see if I could find some lumber or something. I went inside. And when I came back outside, it was up. It was already up. It was supported. And what happened is my neighbor had come out, who never looks out in his backyard, came out, lifted it up by himself, and supported it. So I just turned to God and said, you are so, so amazing. And I don't know why we get wonder, wonder at this. I, I read a, a, a line in a book I've been reading by E.W. Kenyon, called In His Presence, and it's all about prayer. So you may hear some more about this this week. And last night, as I was praying for some people that are very sick with this COVID-19 in our church, not in our church, but relatives of people in our church, and, you know, severe situations where it looks hopeless, I ran across this line in Kenyon's book, and I want to read it to you. And it really just quickened in me. When we come to God, you're not asking for the possible, you're always praying for the impossible. You're asking for things that cannot be done by any human method. Jesus says with his father, all things are 
possible to him that believe. So we look at a situation of somebody who's very sick and the doctors may say they're dying and, and, and that's, we get fear from that because the doctors are saying there's nothing more we can do. Well, that's human method and they're doing the best they can. But that's when God takes over. With God, nothing is impossible. The Bible's full of examples of people that came to Jesus with impossible situations. The woman with the issue of blood, who for 12 years had been bleeding to death, and she just touched his garment and she was made well. He was on his way to Lazarus, to, uh, to Jairus' daughter who was dying, and before he got there, she died. That didn't stop Jesus. He said, fear not, only believe. So whatever you're facing today in your family, whether it's in relationships, your finances, whether it's somebody that's sick, with this disease or you may be sick look at it realize don't look at it through human terms but look at it with what god can do and the god you go to to ask to deliver you is a god who can do all things abraham learned to put his trust in a god who could raise the dead and call things into existence that never existed before that's why abraham said for god what he's promised me is not at all difficult so whatever's facing you today I want you to go to the Word of God where, and, and confess over this. God, with you, nothing is impossible. I'm going to put my trust in you. And instead of being anxious, make your request known unto God. Well, praise the Lord. It went a little longer today, but I trust that it's a blessing to you. Just challenge you as that God's challenging me and challenging us together in our home, in our families where we can't get out to come to him. It's time to come to him and pray. So God bless you. We'll be back with you tomorrow, Wednesday. And in the meantime, have a great, wonderful day in the Lord, and we'll see you then.